Yes, feel free. Yeah, take okay, it away. wonderful. Well, good evening, everybody. Thanks so much. Welcome uh, to the presentation this evening. Thanks for joining us. My intention this evening is to hopefully provide a little bit of inspiration and get everybody dreaming and thinking about some wonderful places that we might visit or consider going to once we are released from the state of lockdown that we're all currently in, uh, you know, all across, all across Canada. I know speaking for myself, uh, you know, being restricted to the immediate confines of my neighborhood. Um, you know, my mind is constantly wondering to where I'm going to go and what we're going to do travel wise as a family once this is all behind us. So hopefully we'll, we'll have some nice ideas to share. I've selected uh, some itineraries that are close to home because, uh, you know, that may be something uh, that uh, provides a bit more peace of mind. For some of you, the idea of traveling without going too far from Canada or uh, perhaps down into the States. But I've also uh, included some ideas for, uh, for European rail getaways as well. So without further ado, let's just dive in. Um, just a quick word of introduction. My name is Chris David. I'm the Vice President of Sales for Railbookers and Amtrak Vacations in Canada. And some of you may be trying to guess or figure out what my accent is. Uh, I've been told it's a little bit of a hybrid. I'm originally from South Africa, born in Johannesburg, and I've been in Canada for the last 22 years, uh, most of that time working in the travel industry. So I'm, I'm kind of a travel industry uh, a veteran here in Canada. And the company that I work for is the Yankee Leisure Group, which includes these two brands that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, Amtrak Vacations and Railbook is a little bit confusing to have those two different names. The reason for that is we partner uh, with Amtrak, uh, the rail network in the U.S., as their official vacation partner. So we have all of our U.S. Uh, itineraries and tours and trips under that Amtrak Vacations banner. And then uh, everything else we do in Europe, uh, in Alaska, in Canada. Alaska's got its own rail network. It's actually not part of Amtrak. So uh, Europe, Alaska, Canada, and uh, other rail journeys in other parts of the world all fall under uh, rail bookers. That gives you an idea of where we can take you and where uh, you can do rail vacations uh, worldwide, all over the US, in Canada, uh, Alaska again. Somebody mentioned Africa, I, you know, that's very intriguing. Uh, South Africa is actually a famous rail travel destination because of the luxury trains that they have down there. There are, believe it or not, three very well-known luxury trains in South Africa. But you can go to Japan, China, India, um, Australia uh, has some wonderful rail experiences. So really the world uh, is your oyster when it comes to you know, traveling and doing a wonderful journey by train to explore everything the destination has to offer. But we primarily, uh, with our group, work in the U.S. Uh, under Amtrak vacations. This is the Amtrak map showing all the different routes. Those colorful lines are the Amtrak routes. Um, and the black dots are the destinations in packages that we offer, places that, uh, you know, where we've put together vacation packages. However, there are far more stations than indicated on this map in, uh, in the US. There are 500 Amtrak stations. So if you, know, if you wanted to start or end your journey or incorporate another of those 500 stations into any of the packages we have, we can absolutely do that. Uh, Europe is the other big operating area for rail bookers. Again, a very uh, comprehensive uh, rail system covering spanning the entire continent. So pretty much anywhere uh, that you might wish to go in Europe, uh, doing so uh, in a rail vacation, using rail as your mode of transportation um, is a great way to explore the continent. And then of course, our own backyard, Canada. Um, my company is actually the official vacation partner for Via Rail as well. So we uh, have access to the entire Via route network to put together wonderful vacation packages. And I'm gonna be showing you one of them um, as one of those those seven that we're, we're featuring this evening. So let me just address, you know, before we dive in and start looking at some of the wonderful destinations, what is a rail vacation? Um, so uh, 
a rail vacation is an independent uh, vacation package. So in that, it, it, in the sense that uh, we are not a group, we are not a group trip. We don't have set departure dates. Uh, so when you look in our brochure or online or look at these wonderful itineraries that I'll be sharing tonight, those are done independently and you can choose the date that you wish to travel. And also bear in mind that any aspect of these itineraries can be tweaked, amended or customized uh, to suit your specific needs or desires. So, you know, if you see a package and you think, well, I'd like to include uh, an alternate or a another destination in that itinerary, uh, that's within what we can do. Uh, the vacation package includes all your rail transportation with confirmed seat reservations, all the hotel accommodation, sightseeing tours, day excursions and activities, local transportation by ferries or cable cars, whatever other means of transport there may be in the destination, and everything that goes into uh, creating that, that perfect independent travel uh, package that you, uh, you know, have in mind. So why travel by train? Why choose rail transportation as opposed to uh, you know, any other way to do it? A bus tour, for example, uh, or, or a fly and drive? Well, I would say that going by train is a you know, particularly enjoyable, exciting, convenient, and hassle-free way to get around any destination. The thing for me that really sets uh, train travel apart is the sense of freedom and the sense of um, space that you have aboard the train itself. You're not confined to your seat. You can get up and move around. You can go to the bathroom whenever you like, um, you know, as opposed to um, being on a, a motor coach, for example, where, uh, you know, one's not really supposed to use the washroom when, when uh, the, the coach is in motion and there are restrictions. And also, it's a quite a confined environment. On a train, you have that freedom to get up and move around. You can uh, go from your seat and spend time in all these wonderful different environments aboard, such as the observation cars. They have fantastic observation cars and all the Amtrak trains uh, with huge domed panoramic windows showcasing the amazing scenery. You can go and grab a snack in the cafe car or, or a meal in the dining car spend time enjoying the company of your fellow travelers in the lounge car. Particularly nice experience for families, multi-generational groups, uh, you know, to hang out with your kids, playing cards, playing games, uh, you know, and, and just enjoying being together. So in that sense, train is just a, a lovely way to travel. Also, it's a city center to city center experience. So you're going right into the heart of the destination you're visiting, uh, you know, usually a very short walk or a short cab ride from your hotel and right in the heart of the action. So um, just all together, when you're traveling independently, doing so by train is a very convenient way to do it. So that said, let's dive in and look at some of the itineraries uh, that we've put together tonight for you to just get some ideas about, you know, some, some wonderful rail experiences and rail journeys uh, to think about. So the first one here is the Glacier National Park getaway, uh, round trip from Chicago. I should mention the first few of these are Amtrak vacations journeys uh, that do start and end in uh, US gateway cities. And I should mention that, you know, if you would, if, if you like the idea of a no fly vacation, you know, just starting your vacation on the train in your home city, uh, all of these packages can be connected uh, with a rail journey, you know, starting in Canada, uh, it's, it's very easy and we can, we can put together the VRL portion and the Amtrak portion to make it um, a land-based, no-fly uh, getaway. So this one, uh, Glacier National Park, starting in Chicago and going uh, across uh, the Great Lakes, the, the Great Plains, and into the northern Rockies of Montana to visit the incredible uh, highlight of uh, Glacier National Park. On this journey, you're traveling uh, aboard the Empire Builder train, one of the famous Amtrak train routes, uh, really well-known and, um, and noteworthy for its incredible scenery. Again, you're traveling around the northern Great Lakes, across the plains, and then into this uh, magnificent Rocky Mountain scenery in Montana, uh, with your destination being 
Glacier National Park, one of the jewels of the U.S. national park system. And uh, interestingly, the, the, the train station uh, actually stops about 208 steps from the National Park Lodge uh, in Glacier. So it's a really convenient way to, uh, to access uh, this amazing place. I think what's notable about this itinerary is just the opportunity to go and, and visit and explore an incredibly beautiful uh, natural environment. When I look at this picture, uh, I want to be that guy sitting here under lockdown, <laughs> standing there uh, on, a, on a mountainside overlooking Two Medicine Lake, breathing in fresh air and taking, this, taking in the magnificent expanse of, uh, of mountain scenery. When you're in Glacier National Park, uh, we have included sightseeing, full day sightseeing excursion uh, out through the park. And what's cool about Glacier is that the uh, tours, the sightseeing tours are conducted in these historic uh, open top buses dating back to the 1930s, uh, driven by these very knowledgeable and very entertaining driver guides called jammers. Uh, my colleagues tell me that the reason for that is that the brakes on these old buses are kind of jerky and they have to be jammed and that's how that's why the, the guides got had to be called sense. jammer. Yeah. Don't, don't be put off though. I mean, I'm, I'm told the brakes do work very well. They're just, <laughs> Good thing. <laughs> they're just kind of old fashioned. Uh, also, when you're in Glacier, we include uh, a cruise on Two Medicine Lake, which is the main uh, lake in the park and the opportunity to uh, witness the, you know, the, the scenery, the incredible mountainscapes from the tranquility of the lake. And uh, these are also done on this fleet of historic old wooden uh, vessels that they have that they still operate. Uh, on the lake. So a wonderful idea, traveling on the Empire Builder through some magnificent scenery, two overnight uh, journeys aboard the train from Chicago out to Glacier and back again, and wonderful sightseeing included, um, you know, on, on the old uh, red open top buses and out on the lake. And you also go, if you're so inclined and you uh, are, you know, you have the mobility and the desire um, included in this program as well is uh, a guided nature hike going out with a, uh, a national park uh, guide. The next itinerary I'd like to tell you guys about is the Rails to the Grand Canyon. And the noteworthy aspect of this one is it's an opportunity to visit one of the great uh, wonders of the world and to really check, uh, check an item off your bucket list that, you know, uh, I think I think many people, if you haven't been to the Grand Canyon, uh, it's something you ought to do. I've had the opportunity to go. I actually spent, um, when I was a student, a week hiking in the canyon, going down to the Colorado River and seeing it uh, in all its majesty from many different vantage points. And I can attest to the fact that it's just, a, you know, an absolutely spectacular place, a kind of a spiritual experience and something that uh, that one ought to do. And, my, and now might be the time uh, to, you know, to do that journey closer to home. This itinerary starts from Los Angeles and you go um, on an overnight journey from LA to Williams, Arizona, which is a, a historic town on Route 66 and it is the jumping off point for the Grand Canyon. And so uh, you, you have the, the chance to ride on Amtrak overnight uh, on the Southwest Chief through this magnificent red rock scenery of the Southwest. And then from Williams, Arizona, you travel on the Grand Canyon Railway, which is also a wonderful rail, experience, rail travel experience going up through beautiful scenery. It's a two hour journey from Williams up and it goes right to the South Rim of the Canyon. Um, wonderful chance to, you know, to see beautiful scenery from the dome cars. And then you have two nights uh, overnight at the rim of the Grand Canyon. You get to wake up to these magnificent views, experience the sunset uh, on the south rim of the canyon, uh, seeing the magnificent uh, changing, uh, changing of the colors uh, in, in the changing light of the evening. Uh, just, just a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience. 
And included here is the Grand Canyon Freedom Tour, when you go, where you go out with an expert guide and naturalist along the South Rim to all the best vantage points and, uh, and view sites, uh, you know, seeing the canyon from different, uh, from different vantage points and learning all about the, the history, uh, the geology, and all the incredible facts and figures which uh, you know, are an important part of a visit to the canyon because it is such an astonishing uh, natural environment. So that's Rails to the Grand Canyon. I want to talk a little bit about customization. I mentioned at the outset that anything that we have at Railbook as an Amtrak Vacations can be tweaked or amended or customized. And this is, you know, I'm going to use this itinerary as an example to explain uh, how that can be done. So, you know, that package has starts in LA with a two nights uh, with, with the overnight trip to Williams on Amtrak and the two nights at the canyon. Uh, if you wanted a little bit more time to soak up the atmosphere at the Grand Canyon and another evening at the South Rim to watch the sunset, uh, you could add an extra night and why not do so at the El Tovar, which is the kind of grand old lady of the Grand Canyon, uh, the most luxurious and sort of iconic uh, accommodation right there on the South Rim. And while you're at it, since the tour does start and end in LA, why not add an LA sightseeing package as well, turning it into a combination of a uh, wonder of the world and national park experience and a city sightseeing uh, opportunity at the same time. The, uh, the next one we're going to look at is the Northern Rail experience. Here's, a, <clears throat> here's an opportunity to experience the three most scenic and uh, probably the most famous uh, Amtrak routes, the Empire Builder, the Coast Starlight, and the California Zephyr, <clears throat> which I'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, you have overnight journeys from Chicago to Seattle uh, with two nights aboard Amtrak on the Empire Builder, then down the California coast on the Coast Starlight, and from San Francisco back to Chicago on the California Zephyr, and a chance to explore and soak up the atmosphere of two of the great cities of the Pacific Northwest, Seattle and San Francisco. Can I stop you there, Chris? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Maybe my peeps have figured this out already, but um, back on your last slide, you had the uh, triangles and the circles with a number in them. Um, that refers to the nights in destination, right? And the nights on the train, is that correct? Yes, Leah, sorry. I'm so sorry to have overlooked that. Just no, how that's to read, okay. How, how to read those itineraries is the red triangles show uh, nights aboard Amtrak and the black circles show nights in destination in a hotel or a national park lodge. Awesome. So yeah, awesome. Okay. So Empire Builder, you're traveling through the Northern Rockies, magnificent scenery and you know, a wonderful chance to spend, uh, to, to have those two nights aboard the train, um, just enjoying the experience of traveling through the US uh, on, a, on an overnight rail journey. The Coast Starlight, again, one of the most scenic rail journeys in the US, traveling down the coast from Seattle to Los Angeles. In this case, uh, you'd be going to, to as far as San Francisco. And the cool thing about the Coast Starlight is that the rail tracks are actually built close to the coast, so you get a vantage point on that coastal scenery uh, that you don't see from the highway. And it, it really is, is magnificent and a, a a wonderful opportunity to, uh, you know, to see that that side of the the coastal scenery. California Zephyr is another of the most scenic routes with Amtrak. It travels uh, from San Francisco back to Chicago uh, through the southern part of the Rocky Mountains, going through Colorado. So again, uh, magnificent vistas and mountain scenery to see from the train. On this tour, there's a lot of included sightseeing. You have a hop on hop off sightseeing tour of San Francisco uh, with all the, you know, the, the main sites included. As well, you have uh, a boat cruise on the San Francisco Bay uh, with um, uh, guided sightseeing as well from the water. And there's an excursion out to Muir Woods to see the incredible old growth redwood forests uh, right there in the San Francisco Bay area as well as uh, a stop in Sausalito, which is this beautiful coastal town in Marin County um, on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge. 
Also on that, uh, on this itinerary, you get to spend time in Seattle with included uh, independent sightseeing throughout Seattle, including like all the, uh, the, the great highlights uh, and uh, attractions of Seattle, including the, uh, the Chihuly Garden and Glass Exhibit, which is, uh, I'm a great Chihuly fan, uh, a wonderful thing to, uh, to see. The next itinerary I'd like to talk about is the Grand National Parks uh, with Yellowstone, Yosemite at the Grand and the Grand Canyon. And, uh, you know, I selected this one to put in this evening because it's, uh, it's an itinerary which sort of provides access to three of the most iconic national park uh, experiences in the U.S. Uh, and, you know, parks that you've, you may have heard about, you've seen in postcards and read about in National Geographic and maybe thought about someday having the chance to go and visit, but never really, uh, you know, kind of actually put it in your travel schedule. Uh, so here's an opportunity and uh, something to think about. The first stop here is Yellowstone National Park, which is uh, an absolutely uh, astonishing place to visit, uh, best known for its hydrothermal and geologic wonders. Yellowstone is home to thousands of hot springs geysers, mud pots, fumaroles, uh, all of these incredible uh, geothermal um, uh, attractions, wonders. Uh, the most famous of these is Old Faithful. Uh, it's not the biggest geyser, geyser in uh, Yellowstone, actually Old Faithful, but it got its name because it's, it erupts with uh, the greatest level of regularity. It erupts about every 90 minutes on average. Uh, for about one to five minutes. And, you know, just an incredible little factoid about this. Uh, when Old Faithful erupts, it expels 8,400 uh, 8, gallons of boiling water uh, up to a, a height of 184 feet. So really qu quite an astonishing thing to see. Uh, Yellowstone is home to half the world's uh, geysers, uh, if you would believe it. Also, uh, you know, there's an included sightseeing tour around the whole park. The park is massive, aside from all the, uh, you know, geothermal uh, sites and wonders, there, is, there are lakes, canyons, magnificent scenery, and uh, incredible wildlife. It's actually quite common to, to spot uh, grizzly bears at Yellowstone, uh, and that's, that's one of the attractions of the park. Also included in this itinerary is magnificent Yosemite. Uh, Yosemite is included here on a day excursion from San Francisco. So you go out um, in a mini coach from San Francisco uh, on a full day trip to explore Yosemite, which is just uh, uh, absolutely breathtaking. Uh, known for its granite peaks, um, most notably Half Dome and El Capitan. It's a mecca for rock climbers for obvious reasons. And uh, your full day sightseeing excursion around Yosemite will take you to all the best uh, and best known uh, sites. You have a chance to uh, take short hikes uh, to, to see some of the waterfalls up close and personal uh, and experience and, and you, you, uh, you have your, uh, your guided uh, sightseeing, um, explaining all about the, 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 the local flora, uh, and, the, and the wildlife, et cetera. So just to recap on, on, on that tour, uh, st starting again in, uh, in Chicago, it includes uh, sightseeing tours of, Yim of uh, Yellowstone, Yosemite, uh, a sightseeing tour of Los Angeles included in there as well, uh, as well as overnight journeys on the uh, California Zephyr, the Coast Starlight, uh, and the Southwest Chief train with uh, four nights on Amtrak. A little bit about hotel accommod accommodation and the ability to customize that uh, with us, with Amtrak Vacations and Rail Bookers. I mentioned earlier that anything we have, when you look at a package, uh, we can change any of the destinations and the same goes for the hotels. Uh, whatever hotel accommodation appeals to you, uh, ranging from three to five star, uh, we can uh, we can accommodate. A lot of our guests uh, actually will choose not to stick with the same level of accommodation throughout their itinerary. 
And uh, with, with group tours and uh, motor coach tours, that accommodation is often set. It's either four star or three star or five star. What we find a lot of guests like to do is in a particular destination where they've heard about a magnificent resort or famous uh, property, they might choose to splurge on the five star in that one particular part of the itinerary and then hold back perhaps uh, with, with a lower star rating accommodation in parts of the itinerary where the accommodation may not be as important to them. A little bit about packing for the train. Well, really easy when you're traveling on Amtrak. You can take two large suitcases, so there's no need to skimp or stress about your packing. And your bags can be checked 45 minutes prior to departure. So uh, really easy. You don't have to worry about lugging your own suitcases aboard the train. I want to just give you a brief overview of the levels of accommodation on the Amtrak train, starting with coach, uh, large re reclining seats, panoramic windows, um, you have PowerPoints at every seat. The thing to bear in mind with coach is that there are no meals included on Amtrak in coach accommodation. Uh, when you move up to the sleeper accommodation, the first level of, uh, of sleeping cabin is the roommate. Okay, you have two large lounge chairs facing one another, which convert to double to, to bunk beds overnight. A huge window, no washroom facilities in the cabin. So washrooms are private, but shared down the, uh, the hall. Uh, and then the next step from the roomette is the bedroom, uh, bedroom level of sleeper accommodation, where again, you have a love seat and a lounge chair, which convert to double to bunk beds overnight. Uh, in the bedroom, the bottom bunk is actually 50% wider than the top one. So uh, that's something of interest to some guests. And washroom accommodation is right there in the cabin itself. So you have a vanity, a toilet and a shower right in the cabin. So if you're concerned about uh, sharing washroom facilities, the sleeper accommodation would be the one to go for. Dining on uh, Amtrak is generally very well regarded and well reviewed and Amtrak caters to all kinds of uh, special meal requests, be they uh, you know, ethnic meals, religious meals, um, vegetarian, vegan, uh, whatever the case may be with advance notice. Bear in mind on Amtrak, there are standard discounts available. Uh, for seniors, there is a 10% discount on the rail portion of any of the itineraries. And for children up to 12, a 50% discount on the rail portion. So those are the US-based itineraries that we're gonna look at this evening. Now we're gonna switch gears a little bit, jump over to the Railbookers brand and look at Alaska and uh, some of the European uh, rail journeys that really stand out for me uh, as being uh, particularly appealing, particularly now under lockdown. So first off, let's look at our Alaska adventure with the Alaska Railroad. A wonderful opportunity to explore this magnificent part of the US uh, in, uh, on an overland journey, an inland exploration by rail up from Anchorage uh, into the uh, incredible um, scenic uh, beauty of Denali National Park. You're traveling uh, in Alaska on Alaska Rail, which is really kind of geared and designed and set up to showcase uh, the scenery and to make the most of the, the sightseeing um, wherever you're traveling, uh, you know, from Anchorage up to Denali, you'll notice that there are multiple uh, domed observation cars aboard the Alaska Rail trains so that everybody aboard has a chance to uh, you know, spend time, spend the whole journey just sitting there uh, at the windows, marveling uh, at the magnificent surroundings outside the window. Uh, here is Denali National Park. I think the picture kind of speaks for itself. Uh, known and celebrated as one of the most magnificent places in the entire United States. The park uh, is quite inaccessible. There are not many roads and most visitors to this park don't see very much of it. Uh, with our itinerary, uh, that you, uh, with rail bookers, you have an included full day sightseeing excursion going out into Denali with a trained uh, naturalist. And so they're taking you into all those places in the park that you can actually access and explore by road to show you the different views, waterfalls, mountains, and chances to see some of the uh, incredible wildlife uh, in the park. Also included in this itinerary is a journey, again, going south from Anchorage down to 
another of Alaska's great national parks, which is Kenai Fjords. Uh, again, a full day excursion out into the park, this time by boat, um, to experience the incredible, uh, the glaciers, the otherworldly scenery of these uh, granite islands um, in, the, uh, in the bay. And this national park is also well known for wildlife sightings, seals, uh, orcas. Uh, so really an amazing opportunity to kind of get up close and personal with those uh, things that Alaska is most famous for, the scenery, the glaciers, the wildlife. So just to recap again there, uh, you have eight nights hotel accommodation in uh, Anchorage and Denali. Um, the journeys aboard Alaska Rail up to Denali and down to Seward where you uh, have that included sightseeing out on Kenai Fjords. So that's Alaska, uh, a great idea I think, and Alaska is already really trending for us. We're hearing from our sales officers around the world at Railbookers in Australia, in uh, Europe and in the US uh, about people being very interested in exploring uh, Alaska on an overland journey uh, by rail as opposed to cruising, which at this point of time, uh, you know, has, well, is not likely to be, uh, to, to be accessible the way it, it once was, let's put it that way. So now let's take a look at Switzerland. Switzerland is one of the best places in the world to explore by rail. Uh, the Swiss have built some of the uh, most astonishing rail routes and networks going uh, through the Alps, feats of engineering using um, bridges, viaducts, uh, tunnels through sheer granite peaks uh, to give you access to these incredible uh, alpine uh, areas. Uh, this itinerary, um, uh, our scenic Switzerland that we're looking at now, includes uh, the most iconic and best known scenic, uh, Swiss scenic train experiences, the Bernina Express, the Glacier Express, and the Golden, uh, the Golden Pass. Uh, Bernina Express uh, is, has been declared a World Her Heritage Site. It uh, consists of 196 bridges, uh, 55 tunnels uh, going across the Bernina Pass, uh, traveling at, at great heights, uh, over 7,000 feet. Uh, again, these, these iconic red sightseeing trains are equipped with panoramic windows to showcase the alpine views. Um, just an, an absolutely amazing experience. That's the Land, Landwasser Viaduct, a uh, very famous uh, built uh, almost a hundred years ago, absolute marvel of engineering uh, to be able to build a bridge like that that then goes right into uh, a tunnel in a sheer granite peak or, or uh, mountain face. The, uh, the Glacier Express. Glacier Express is the slowest express train in the world. It travels at an average speed of 24 miles an hour. The reason is that the, uh, the rails uh, you know, are so windy in order to uh, traverse this mountain uh, terrain. Uh, it first started operating in 1930 and it travels from Zermatt to St. Moritz. It's a trip of about eight hours and honestly a journey that most people wish would never end. Uh, the panoramic windows aboard the Glacier Express, you know, just provide that perfect outlook on the, uh, on the mountain scenery. Incredible food uh, available on board. The, couple you see on the top left there are enjoying a magnificent European meal. That's about uh, $30 to $45 uh, would be the cost of, uh, of a meal like that aboard the Glacier Express. Uh, and just what an experience. Drinking a glass of wine, magnificent view outside, incredibly comfortable, uh, just a, a bucket list opportunity. Uh, this Swiss rail journey also includes several of the specialty trains uh, in Switzerland on day excursions. Uh, the Gornegrat Cog Railway um, is, is known to be the best uh, opportunity to see the Matterhorn. Um, these trains travel at such steep grades that they, they have to use cog wheels, uh, which is basically a giant gear underneath the train in order to provide enough traction to get it up uh, the mountainside. Um, and this is a day excursion from Zermatt. After breakfast, guests will board the uh, Gornograt, 
um, and uh, have these incredible um, views of the of the Matterhorn as they uh, as they go up to the top. Uh, the Golden Pass. This is an ultra modern train uh, equipped with unique features. Uh, particularly, these windows have been specially designed to basically make as if uh, the the window isn't there. You feel completely at one with the uh, the landscape outside. Uh, incredibly high tech. Mount Pilatus is another of these iconic um, trains which takes you up to the top of uh, Pilatus, which uh, rises above uh, Lucerne, the town of Lucerne. Again, a cog train uh, traveling at incredibly steep grades. Um, you can see that the train has to be designed in such a way that um, you, <laughs> when you, when you have a, when you have a beverage, uh, it, it has a little a rotate, a little cup holder on a little hinge so that your, your beverage doesn't spill over because it's traveling at, uh, it's, it's, it's ascending on, on such a steep angle. And then there's the Jungfrau. The Jungfrau Joch, known as the top of Europe. Uh, this is the highest rail station in all of Europe. It uh, starts from the town of Interlaken, again, a day excursion, uh, traveling up to the top. When you get to uh, the Station at the top of the Jungfrau, there's a ton of activities uh, up there, uh, chocolate shop, um, and a, ch a chance to spend time just uh, enjoying the magnificent scenery on a clear day. You can see all the way to the Black Forest of Germany. Uh, so really uh, an incredible, iconic uh, uh, Swiss uh, Alpine experience. So that's, uh, that's the Switzerland trip. Uh, all of these, like, these iconic uh, sightseeing trains, the Glacier Express, the Bernina Express, uh, the Gornegrat to see the Matterhorn, the Jungfrau going up Mount Pilatus. So just packed chock full of all these uh, amazing uh, rail experiences showing off uh, you know, the best scenery that Switzerland has to offer. I'd now like to share uh, a, a close to home rail travel opportunity, the Grand Circle of the Canadian Rockies. Um, there are, you know, there are many of us that uh, have thought about going and exploring the Rockies, going out to uh, Banff and Jasper and, and seeing the incredible uh, mountain scenery that we have right on our own doorstep here in Canada. Uh, Perhaps this year is the, due to, the, is the year to do so. Uh, enjoy a closer to home vacation, um, exploring uh, the, the, the wonders of our own Western provinces. Uh, this itinerary is unique in that it combines both the luxury sightseeing train on the Rocky Mountaineer and uh, the overnight train on Via Rail going uh, in alternate directions uh, from the from the Rockies uh, to Vancouver. So you have that opportunity to, to experience rail travel uh, from both of those, those angles, uh, starting with the, the Rocky Mountaineer. Those of you who are not familiar with the Rocky Mountaineer, it travels by uh, daylight. It is a luxury rail experience, magnificent food, uh, and you're, you're stopping overnight uh, at uh, beautiful hotels um, and traveling through the scenery by day. Included in the itinerary are all the iconic sightseeing uh, activities that you would want to do when visiting the Rocky Mountains. In Banff, we include uh, the gondola ride to the top of Sulphur Mountain to, uh, you know, overlooking uh, the, the, the Rockies. Day excursion to Lake Louise and the opportunity to go out on the lake, weather permitting based on seasonality, or hike around uh, Lake Louise, magnificent hikes through the forests uh, and up to uh, other smaller lakes at higher altitudes, uh, really uh, incredible place to visit. And the journey up the Icefields Parkway between Banff and Jasper and the chance to uh, go out on these uh, ice explorers on the Columbia Glacier uh, and, and see this incredible glacier up close. Time in Jasper. Um, this picture of Jasper just always takes my breath away. It reminds me of those Lorne Harris uh, group of seven paintings. I think, you know, it, it, it almost looks like it could be one. 
And then also in the itinerary, you have the chance to uh, travel between uh, between JAS, between Banff and uh, and Vancouver uh, aboard via rail um, on on an overnight an overnight journey. And it's important to mention that via rail schedules these journeys in such a way as to maximize the sightseeing. So you are traveling for the majority of the daylight hours uh, through the Rockies uh, and have that that chance to, to witness the, uh, the scenery as well. A little bit about the accommodation aboard uh, Via Rail. The basic level of accommodation uh, is economy on Via Rail, incredibly comfortable seating. The first level of sleeper accommodation are the berths. This is not a, not a private uh, cabin, so you're sharing the cabin with uh, another guest, but overnight, uh, it's converted into private bunk beds with a heavy curtain that comes across. For private accommodations, the uh, entry level is the uh, cabin for one. Uh, and then you have a cabin for two, which converts to bunk beds overnight. Now with Via Rail, it's important to note that none of the, the uh, sleeping accommodations have washroom facilities included. So uh, washrooms are gonna be uh, private, but shared down the hall. Uh, all your meals, however, are included with sleeping accommodations on Via Rail, as was the case with Amtrak. I'd like to let you know a little bit about Via Rail Prestige Class, because this is something very unique, and some people aren't aware that Via has this, um, this uh, category. Uh, this is an absolute uh, five-star um, rail travel experience in Via Prestige. The cabins uh, are these magnificently appointed state rooms with wood paneled uh, walls, heated walls and floors, a full queen size bed looking out onto a panoramic window. Uh, you have this beautiful lounge at the back where interactive presentations are conducted with naturalists and historians uh, and experts uh, talking to you about uh, the local environment. And there's concierge service. So you basically have a butler service throughout your journey. And what's quite common um, for people who you know, want to experience our own country um, in you know, the lap of luxury is to combine uh, the Via Rail prestige experience on the Canadian train between Toronto and Vancouver, uh, and then combine that with the Rocky Mountaineer um, from the Rockies over, over to, to Vancouver. So you get the, you know, the best of all worlds, the luxury sightseeing train with the incredible cuisine through the Canadian Rockies, and then matching that up, uh, going across the rest of the country in, in Via in prestige class. Wonderful food aboard Via Rail, known to uh, you source local ingredients. So, you know, lamb in the prairies, uh, fish as you're going over towards uh, the coast uh, through the Rocky Mountains. So that covers the itineraries that we wanted to talk to you about tonight, folks. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for bearing with me. Um, I also want to let you know, I, I, I want to just give you a quick glimpse of, uh, of who we are. This is our team, uh, the, all the folks at, at Braille Bookers and Amtrak Vacations. We're all working from home, uh, but important to note, we're all here. We're all ready. We're all uh, working. We're absolutely focused uh, on the time just around the corner where uh, travel does resume, uh, airports reopen and global destinations once again begin welcoming travelers. And we'd love to welcome uh, any or all of you on uh, one of our great rail journeys, any of those that I've discussed tonight or any others around the world, including Scandinavia, all throughout Europe. Um, and, uh, that's that's it for me, folks. That's awesome. Uh, time that was, to uh, amazing, time to Chris. <laughs> that was On so good. It makes us. Well, I was just hearing from Gillen. She wants to go to Alaska right now. So <laughs> that's awesome. You know, yeah. honestly, honestly, Leah, I uh, I feel that I have to give a little bit of a disclaimer. It, it's about uh, we we started about nine o'clock at night my time here in Toronto, and uh -huh. I, I I feel that I wasn't I, I wasn't able to give as uh, as as fluent a a, um, a run through of these itineraries as I would have liked. So thank oh, you for wow. bearing with me. If it was, it was a little, if it, if it was a little halting, I do apologize. That's all right. We're grateful and, that you stayed up this late to 
inform us of what you guys offer and um, show us all the wonderful itineraries. So we have a couple questions and if anyone has any other questions that come to mind, um, just drop them in the chat um, box down below on your screen or you, if you're on your phone, you can scroll. I think it's to the right or to the left now. I can't remember, but um, the chat box will come up and you can type your question in there. So um, one of the questions we have is um, just comparing with airlines. She's wondering if, if an airline is not full, they'll sometimes cancel the flight and put you on another date right. and time. So mm -hmm. with the train, does that ever happen if the train is not full? Are your dates ever changed on you? No. Okay. The, the, the rail schedules are absolutely set in stone and the trains run like clockwork. I mean, particularly in Europe, you know, Europe is famous for punctuality and reliability of its rail service. And that's something which uh, is absolutely true. Uh, and you'll find is the case in reality. The other thing to note about rail service is uh, rail has been declared an essential service. So even, you know, even during uh, these times of lockdown, the trains are still running. Schedules may have altered slightly, um, you know, in light of the, the, the situation that we're in. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, Amtrak is an essential service and, uh, and the trains are running, but you will never have a case of a, of a rail uh, schedule being altered uh, based on the load factor or, you know, the, the amount of people booked on, on a particular uh, journey. It's, right. uh, it's like, you know, it's like the national transportation system yes. and uh, the train goes when, it, when it's supposed to go. Okay, another question for you. Um, Ed is wondering, um, do you have anything for the British Isles? Absolutely. Um, we do Scotland. We have a wonderful itinerary of Scotland. Um, including the Jacobite Railway, which is the famous Harry Potter train. Um, but as well, you know, going up into the Highlands, uh, excursions out to, uh, you know, some of the, um, the, the islands. Um, so yeah, Scotland we do uh, throughout the UK and very notably Ireland is a wonderful rail travel destination. There's some uh, lovely itineraries uh, that, uh, that cover Ireland. And the reason I love rail travel in Ireland, and probably it goes for other parts of the UK as well, is that, you know, it's the best way to go if you want to travel like a local and you want to meet locals. And in Ireland, all the, the local people have the gift of the gab. They've got wonderful stories. Yeah. And so, you know, when you're on the trains, you get to meet them and you get to experience that part of the local culture. Right. Okay. Um, and I know as well, you guys also do Japan, I believe, itineraries in, for Japan. Anything else in Asia that you offer? Um, yes, we have itineraries in China. I don't know all that much about them. Um, and, you know, in, in light of, you know, what's happened recently, I'm not sure that there'll be a whole lot of call for, for China at the moment. Right. Uh, but also there are some wonderful rail journeys in India and most notably, uh, we work with the Maharajas Express, which is the luxury, uh, one of the Indian luxury trains, uh, traveling between Mumbai and Delhi and going through some of the, uh, the great, um, you know, sort of highlight cities of, of India. So. Um, and, and Japan, you know, is known as a great rail travel destination because all the trains there are bullet trains. Shinkansen, they're known as, uh, you know, travel, um, maglev trains traveling at huge, uh, incredible speeds, incredibly yes. comfortable, and probably the best way to get around Japan. By train. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. So it doesn't look like we have any other questions there. So I'm just going to put up one more poll and see, um, it's just a finale here, a question for you all. Now that you've seen the different destinations, where would you choose to take your next rail vacation? Within Canada, United States, including Alaska, Europe, Scandinavia, UK or Ireland? We have some votes coming in. Not. Everyone's still awake, it looks like. <laughs> I know we have some tuning in from Quebec, so they're even up later than Chris is. An hour ahead of 
Kim. So, okay, we'll end the polling there and show you our results here. Looks like the US is winning here on this vote. And then Europe, or then Ireland, UK, nice. That is a beautiful place to see all the different, the greens and UK going up to Scotland, like you said, lovely. All right, well, I wanna thank you so much, Chris, for joining us, that was great. Um, this Thursday coming up, we have a Tour Can Vacations joining us for our next travel talk, and we will be uh, talking about African safaris with them, so looking forward to that as well. But, Is that uh, gonna be Wendy Wu? No, not Wendy. We have Philip joining us. Wendy oh, Philip. Is, yeah, during this time, Wendy is off for a little while. So yeah, we get to um, tune in with Philip. So that'll be nice. He's but, my fellow countryman. I mean, oh, he is. <laughs> Very good. Well, All right. Well, thank you so much. And thanks everyone for joining us and tuning in. And if you have any questions about rail vacations, feel free to pass them on um, to me. You can send me an email or text, whichever works best for you, and I'll be happy to answer them. And if I can't answer them, I will send it on to Chris. So thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. And yeah. good night. Thanks so much Take for care. joining us. Take care. Good night. Bye-bye, Leah. Bye-bye, Chris.